Level zero. The glacier looks immortal, a frozen river that's been there since the last ice age. You'd think it's permanent, motionless, unchanging, but even now, it's moving, just a few centimeters a day, or maybe less. Level zero is stability, but not stasis. Internally, a glacier is always flowing. Gravity presses down, ice crystals deform, meltwater buried under hundreds of meters of pressure lubricates the bedrock and nudges the ice downhill. This is normal, predictable. This is a cold-based glacier, frozen to its bed, locked in place, anchored like a keystone in the Earth's surface. Greenland has thousands of them, Antarctica has more. They grind forward, they melt slightly in summer, they refreeze in winter. There's no collapse here, no threat, just glacial time. But sometimes, warm air or seawater creeps in. The balance tips, and what was slow becomes unstable. Stable doesn't mean safe. Long-term monitoring of surface elevation and basal temperature can reveal collapse risk decades before anything breaks. Level one. Now, cracks appear. At first, they're small, only a few centimeters across, but they deepen, stretch, multiply. This is the beginning of internal failure. Glaciers, like rock, break under stress. As gravity pulls ice downhill, the upper layer, brittle and cold, cracks open. This is crevasse propagation, the most visible sign of strain. Crevasses don't collapse, but they're warning signs. They form where the glacier flows over a bend, drops over a cliff, or speeds up near the terminus. They can be 50 meters deep, some over 100, enough to swallow a person or a truck. On Jakobshavn Glacier in Greenland, crevasses now appear farther inland, a sign the ice is thinning faster than it used to. You don't need warm air to form crevasses, just momentum. Once a glacier begins to surge forward, the ice breaks to keep up. Hikers and scientists use ground-penetrating radar to detect hidden crevasses beneath snow-covered areas, essential for safety on active ice. Level 2 Cracks turn into chaos. This is where slabs shear off cliffs, entire walls of ice collapse like frozen avalanches. An icefall is what happens when a glacier flows over a steep drop or a broken bed. The ice can't bend fast enough, so it fractures. Think of it like whitewater rapids, but made of ice. The most famous example, the Kumbu Icefall on Mount Everest. Every year, climbers risk their lives crossing ladders stretched over yawning ice chasms all while blocks the size of buildings shift beneath their feet. Icefall events aren't rare, but they're deadly. In 2014, 16 Sherpas died in a single collapse. And as glaciers warm, icefalls become more violent, weaker ice, more melt water, faster flow. The result? Less stable seracs, towering ice pinnacles that can fall without warning. This isn't a glacier retreating, it's a glacier breaking. Icefalls change daily. Satellite imagery can't keep up. Always check local conditions and avalanche warnings before entering glacial terrain. Level 3 You hear it before you see it, the sound of water roaring beneath ice. Surface melt isn't new. But at level 3, it starts to change the glacier's structure. Warm temperatures trigger widespread melt across the glacier surface. That meltwater doesn't just run off, it drills downward, carving vertical shafts called mullens. Picture thousands of streams punching into the glacier at once. Each one lubricates the base, each one weakens the core. This is called hydrofracturing, and it's what broke part of the Larsen B ice shelf in 2002. Thousands of melt ponds formed on the surface. Then, one by one, they drained downward, fast. Within three weeks, 3,250 square kilometers of ice shattered into the ocean. That's larger than Luxembourg. Surface melt collapses don't just lower the glacier, they destabilize everything downstream. When you see large numbers of blue melt ponds on satellite imagery, it's often a precursor to rapid glacial weakening, especially on floating ice shelves. Level 4 Now the ocean joins the game. Calving is the natural process where glaciers shed icebergs into the sea, but level 4 isn't natural. It's a runaway collapse. When the front of a tidewater glacier, one that ends in the ocean, starts retreating faster than it advances, carving accelerates. Slabs the size of skyscrapers split off, 
sometimes daily. The ice doesn't just crack, it splinters, undercuts, rolls. This is called Marine Terminating Glacier Retreat. Greenland's Jakobshavn Glacier, once the fastest flowing glacier in the world, lost 40 kilometers of length in just a few decades. And as it retreats inland, it sheds more and more ice into the sea, raising sea levels around the globe. The worst part? As warm ocean water eats away the glacier's base, the front becomes top-heavy. This triggers buoyancy-driven carving, where the glacier lifts, breaks, and crashes. Scientists monitor submarine melting using sonar beneath floating glacier tongues. Rapid undercutting is often a sign of incoming carving cascades. Level 5 The glacier looks calm, but underneath, a lake is forming, trapped, growing, waiting. This is Level 5, a glacial outburst flood, also known in Icelandic as a Jökullaup, a sudden explosive drainage of a lake beneath a glacier. Where does the water come from? From meltwater pooling in buried basins, from geothermal heat under ice caps, from volcanic eruptions beneath the glacier, and when the pressure builds enough, the dam breaks. Not always violently, but always destructively. In 1996, Iceland's Vatnajökull glacier released 3.6 cubic kilometers of water in just a few hours. That's 14 times the flow of the Mississippi River. Bridges washed away, roads collapsed, and massive boulders, some 300 tons, were thrown kilometers downstream. Subglacial floods also threaten infrastructure in the Himalayas, Andes, and Alaska. Glacial lakes at high altitudes are growing. Their moraine dams, made of loose rock and debris, are unstable. And when they burst, the valley below has minutes, sometimes seconds. Use open source databases like the ICI Mod Glacial Lake Atlas to monitor high risk glacial lakes. Early warning systems save lives in at risk mountain villages. Level 6. You don't hear it first, you feel it. The ground trembles. A deep, muted thud travels through your boots. And then the sound arrives. Not a crack, not a roar, but a ripping. This is the full face carving event. The front wall of a glacier, often 60 to 80 meters tall, sometimes 100, fractures from end to end and plunges into the ocean. Not a chunk, not an iceberg, an entire face. Imagine a building collapsing sideways, except the building is made of ancient blue ice, compacted for centuries, and weighs millions of tons. When it breaks, the energy released is massive. The splash alone can generate local tsunamis. If you're in a boat within a kilometer, the wave might swamp you. These are level six collapses, the first tier of catastrophic carving, and they're becoming more frequent. Jakobshan Glacier in Greenland used to flow at 7 meters per year. Now it surges at over 50 meters per day during peak melt. Why? Because the ocean is warmer, eating the glacier from beneath. The result? More flotation, less friction, greater instability. And when the base loses contact with the ground, gravity takes over. The entire front wall becomes a liability. Some of these collapses are sudden, others take days, cracking and groaning like wounded giants. But when they fall, they fall completely. If visiting tidewater glaciers, like in Alaska or Patagonia, always stay at least one to two kilometers offshore. A full-face carving event can generate waves powerful enough to capsize boats from afar. Level 7. Now the glacier doesn't fall, it folds. This is internal collapse, a rare but brutal failure that starts inside the ice. Instead of breaking at the edge, the glacier deforms from within. Pressure builds across the ice body. Meltwater infiltrates crevasses and freezes again, expanding, forcing fractures deeper. Eventually, an entire section loses structural integrity. Imagine a bridge failing mid-span, not because the supports cracked, but because the internal tension snapped everything at once. In 2017, a 1.5-kilometer segment of the Aru Glacier in Tibet detached and roared downslope. It wasn't a slide. It wasn't calving. It was an ice avalanche, triggered by subsurface melt and thermal imbalance. No warning, no precedent. Eight herders and hundreds of animals were buried instantly under ice, moving over 100 kilometers per hour. The area wasn't considered at risk, until it happened again 32 days later. A second glacier, kilometers away, collapsed almost identically. 
Scientists were stunned because this wasn't a normal glacial breakup. It was systemic failure caused by warming air, warming soil, and basal lubrication. That's level seven, where a glacier doesn't just respond to weather, it becomes weaponized by it. And when it collapses, it doesn't wait for an audience. It just falls. Remote glacier basins aren't always safe. Use updated satellite imagery and slope stability models when hiking or working near high-altitude ice fields. Internal collapses give no warning signs from the surface. Level 8. This time, the ice doesn't fall from cliffs or surge downhill. It breaks from the bottom. This is submarine destabilization, where warm ocean currents creep underneath marine terminating glaciers and quietly sabotage them from beneath. You can't see it, but satellites can. The Thwaites Glacier in Antarctica, nicknamed the Doomsday Glacier, is a prime candidate for level 8 collapse. It sits on retrograde bedrock, meaning its base gets deeper as you move inland. So when warm water slips beneath it and melts the underside, the glacier starts retreating and accelerating. In 2020, scientists discovered that Thwaites is losing over 50 billion tons of ice per year, and it's held back by a single floating ice shelf, one that's cracking. If that shelf disintegrates, the glacier will no longer be buttressed. Collapse won't be gradual, it'll be triggered. What makes this level terrifying isn't the speed, but the consequence. Thwaites alone could raise global sea levels by over 65 centimeters. But that's not all. It anchors other glaciers. If it falls, their collapse accelerates. That's over three meters of potential sea level rise, locked in ice that's already on the move. And here's the catch. Submarine collapses don't just destabilize coastlines, they redraw them. Stay informed with real-time glaciological monitoring, NASA's IceBridge, or ESA's Cryosat missions. Understanding ocean-glacier interaction is crucial to predicting near-future sea level changes. Level 9. Now it's not just ice collapsing, it's time. This is permafrost glacier collapse, and it doesn't just melt, it decays. Permafrost is frozen ground, often hundreds of meters thick, locking carbon, methane, and ancient organic material beneath the surface. Glaciers that sit atop permafrost rely on that frozen foundation to stay stable. But as global temperatures climb, even by 1.5 degrees Celsius, permafrost begins to thaw. And when it does, the ground doesn't just soften, it liquefies. In Siberia and northern Canada, entire glacial landforms are now slumping like pudding. Valleys collapse, hills deform, and worst of all, methane is released. Methane is over 80 times more potent than CO2 over 20 years. A glacier collapsing due to permafrost loss isn't just a geological event. It's a biochemical chain reaction, and the feedback is terrifying. More thaw equals more emissions equals more warming equals more thaw. It becomes exponential. In 2022, a collapse in the Italian Alps killed 11 hikers. Not because of an avalanche, but because a glacier, weakened by permafrost loss and heat, let go. It fell not in winter, but in July. That's level 9. Where the ice doesn't just break, it accelerates its own extinction, and maybe ours. For those living or traveling in alpine regions, avoid glacier faces and known permafrost zones during summer. Unstable melt zones can collapse even under clear skies. Thermal inertia is invisible, but deadly. Level 10. Now the collapse isn't regional, it's systemic. This is continental ice sheet failure, a multi-thousand year fortress of ice unraveling in decades. Antarctica holds 90% of the planet's fresh water. Greenland alone stores enough ice to raise sea levels by over seven meters. And both are showing fractures not just at their edges, but at their cores. In level 10 events, ice sheets don't break like cliffs or fall like chunks. They disintegrate through a process called marine ice sheet instability. Here's how it works. An ice sheet's grounding line, where the glacier meets the seabed, retreats inland. The deeper the bedrock, the more ice sits in water, and ice in water floats. Floating ice is unstable, so melt accelerates, feedback loops ignite, and the glacier retreats even faster. This is already happening at Pine Island and Thwaites in West Antarctica. Scientists estimate that once critical thresholds are passed, the entire West Antarctic ice sheet could collapse. Not in 1,000 years, but within centuries. 
or sooner. And the worst part? These collapses are irreversible on human timescales. Even if temperatures stabilize, the architecture of the ice is already broken. The consequences? Multi-meter sea level rise, coastal cities lost, not over generations, but within this one. Entire island nations, Kiribati, Tuvalu, the Maldives, gone. Support policies that fund long-term glacier monitoring and emissions reduction. Large-scale collapses aren't sudden, but when the tipping point is crossed, prevention is no longer possible. We must act before collapse accelerates. Level 11. Now the collapse doesn't reshape landscapes, it reshapes the climate itself. This is ice climate tipping, where glaciers become planetary levers. Because glaciers don't just respond to climate, they regulate it. When massive ice bodies collapse, they no longer reflect sunlight, they absorb heat. This is known as the albedo effect. White snow reflects up to 90% of incoming solar radiation. Bare earth and ocean? Closer to 10 to 15%. That difference becomes a climate accelerator. In level 11 scenarios, the Arctic goes ice-free in summer, a milestone that scientists once thought wouldn't happen until 2100. Now, we may see it within the next decade, but it doesn't stop there. With no Arctic summer sea ice, jet streams destabilize, storm tracks shift, Rain belts migrate, droughts stretch longer, floods strike harder. Glacial meltwater from Greenland disrupts the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, AMOC, a key conveyor of global climate. If AMOC slows dramatically, Western Europe freezes while the tropics overheat. Fish stocks collapse, monsoons fail, agricultural calendars unravel, glacier collapse. Here isn't just about rising oceans, it's about a planet spinning out of thermal balance. Level 12. This isn't a glacier collapsing. This is the idea of glaciers collapsing. Because at level 12, there are no glaciers left to fall. This is glacier extinction. Planetary warming has passed the safe limits. Every mountain glacier on Earth, gone. The Alps, bare. The Andes, dust. The Himalayas, ice-free peaks over brown stone. This is not speculation without basis. The IPCC warns that under a 4.4 degrees Celsius warming trajectory, over 80% of glaciers worldwide could vanish by 2100. Already, Iceland held a funeral in 2019 for Okjokul, its first officially lost glacier. What does glacier extinction mean? It means 1.9 billion people who depend on glacial melt for drinking water, agriculture, and hydropower now face annual shortages. It means rivers that once flowed year-round now die in summer. It means regional collapse, one valley at a time. But it also means something symbolic. The loss of glaciers is the loss of planetary memory. These ice cores held air from 800,000 years ago. They tracked volcanic winters, industrial smog, ancient droughts. They were our climate archive. And once they're gone, so is that record. Glacier extinction isn't just about water. It's about who we were and what we refused to save. Support local and international efforts to archive and preserve ice cores from melting glaciers, e.g. Ice Memory Project. We may not be able to save every glacier, but we can still save their story before it melts into silence. Sure, here's a short, punchy outro CTA in the same immersive tone. Glaciers shaped our mountains, carved our valleys, and built the rivers we drink from. Now, they're vanishing, faster than we ever imagined. If this opened your eyes, tap that bell, because what collapses next might not be ice. See you in the next one. Stay curious, stay grounded.